When you had your first child, you actually had a, a stroke. I did after that. I was eating salt, child, and I didn't know that salt, you know, fluid retention. And I was just so nauseous with her. And like I said, being a new parent, I didn't know what I was doing. And uh, my brain actually swole a bit and scraped my skull. Thank God, no damage. And yeah, I was fine. God didn't want me to leave here yet. Hallelujah. But yeah, that's, that, that's what happened. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I really was meant to be here, huh? Because people come out, they, they, you're out. If you have a stroke, it's over. But, you know, thank God. I didn't. Well, once, once you got married, uh, you started having issues with Jive Records. Absolutely. Because they didn't know how to sell that product that wasn't attractive. Um, how do we market this family, black girl, that's... Um, a sex symbol, I guess. I didn't know I was sexy till I look back now. Or I meet people say, girl, yes, I want the, mm. I didn't know that. I thought I was just, you know, because I'm kind of lame. I don't look at, you know, I think I'm sexy if I put on something sexy. But anyway, um, yeah, so they didn't know how to sell that image, um, being a mom. And, you know, that was looking like old lady, you know. Now it's cute, put your baby on your hip. Um, but that wasn't the, the trend then. So it wasn't. It was business. It wasn't personal. It was like, we can't do shit with this. This is not the ketchup we formulated. You know, so they didn't know how to sell that ketchup. And they were just like, Psh, girl, we don't know what to do with you unless you be Lil' Kim of, I remember once somebody saying that, you're going to have to be the Lil' Kim of the label. Like, be completely nasty and raunchy for it to create another lane. And I was like, damn. So you want me to slut out? And I didn't want to do that at the time. <laughs> Now's a different day. I'm just kidding. But no, I didn't want to do that then. So I said, fuck it. Let me have my contract. And I went home. I had babies. Okay. Well, I guess while you and Dream were together, that's when he did Umbrella for Rihanna? Yep. It was towards the end of us together, though. But yeah, he did. He wrote Umbrella in 07. I remember emailing one of my closest friends saying, oh, my God. Whoever's involved with this song is about to change their lives. Tricky can tell you, I told I told him and Dream that in the studio. I said, this is about to change. I don't care if Erica Badu sing it. It's gonna, because it, it was a hit record. A hit record is a hit record. That, that's how you know it's a hit. Anybody can sing it. It really doesn't matter who sings it when it's a real hit. But of course, Rihanna, with her dynamic, unique ability, like her voice and accent and look overall, carried it even you know more so yeah i was proud of him he did that shit and i love that record who doesn't love umbrella it's a great record but yeah, yeah. he brought that well, in 07 when we were kind of going through a separation period i guess you could say or we mm -hmm. decided i guess not long after that <laughs> to yeah. part part ways and um yeah for the better too we became better friends after you know the split all right well Umbrella is Dream's biggest record, isn't it? No, he did put a ring on it. Beyonce, he did Holy Grail. Jay Z, he did Child. That list is long. I just right. I, I slapped the thighs again. But no, I don't think Umbrella was the biggest. I don't know in terms of chart topping and um, all of that. But he well, had some at, other big records. At the time, was that his biggest record? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Oh yeah. So, then oh definitely that was his step. Into, you know, yeah. absolutely. That was the start, the beginning for him. You know, and relationships a lot of times, you know, are hard to maintain when there's a lot of success or a lot of failure. So do you think that all that success coming from him at that time strained the relationship and caused the divorce? Yeah, it was already damn strange. Hell, I was trying to support my family and he was like, what the frick? And it wasn't, we were struggling, man. We didn't have money. We didn't, we really didn't. We was making it work. But at this point, we had gone independent. He wasn't doing any major works, and I was gone from my label. That's how we formulated Spark One and did an independent animalistic record, which turned into Radio Killer Records. So, no, it was a struggling time. It really fucking was. And then Umbrella gave him a chance to, you know, to do what he wanted. So, you're already strained, and you get this opportunity to go do this. What are you going to damn do at 20 something years old? So I don't blame that, but it definitely did add to the weight of our already strained relationship at that point. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys broke up. Bye bye. And then <laughs> and then uh you get back together with Wayne again. 
I know. Look at God. He's so funny. No, but uh, <laughs> hey, honey, I'm my next album gonna be called the After Effects. <laughs> Cause after you've had her, you will never forget. I'm just kidding. No, not. But anyway, he re <laughs> he reached back out. Like, where have you been? It had been five years. So he um, wanted to apologize for the way it ended before. And I needed a damn friend. I felt like the whole world was laughing at me. And um, so it kind of, you know, it's one of those things where when you've loved someone before and if you reconnect, you can mistake that for being back in love with them versus like, no, oh, you're just someone I still love. So that's how that happened. And I had my little baby, my last one, my little boy, Neil. And so I thank God for that. And during that pregnancy, I was like, okay, this is not the relationship we should have right now. And so that's how that ended. And I just kept it going. Okay. So while you guys were in a relationship, uh, Wayne ended up having two other kids outside the relationship. Yes. Well, not while. Um, Sarah, um, his oldest son, that was prior to or in the beginning of us reconnecting again. So that happened, and um, the, his son was born while we were back. He had to get, proposed to me again, so we were engaged again. So, yes, and then I found out the day I was confirmed pregnant with our son that he had another one three months ahead of me that that should be expected three months ahead of ours. So I'm like, wow. Then my mama okay. died. So, yeah, life. Damn. Well, the, the other baby was with Lauren London. Yes, I love you, Lauren. Sorry, I love her. Yeah, uh, rest in peace, Nipsey. I know. Okay, so how do you take being in love with this man and suddenly two other kids pop up? And he already had how many kids at this point? Only one, Reggie Oh, okay, so this was yeah, baby so, number two know, and three last. for him. So, you know, that, that you know, I'm the last. Okay, so uh, how, how did you take him having two other kids outside of the relationship? Well, I looked at it other? like this. When we reconnected, I had three. He, I wasn't pregnant. That's not the reason he proposed to me or anything like that. So I took it for you accepting mine. If this occurred before us and we're just now getting back to it, why wouldn't I accept that son if you're telling me you want to, we, you know, you want to marry me? So that was that. And then the next one, though, which is why the relationship ended while I was carrying our son because I couldn't take that. I'm like, I thought I could. I'm a different type of woman. I was like, you know what? You love me, fuck it. But then I realized I, that's not what I wanted. So I let it go. Okay, so the baby with Lauren London, that was the one that was like the final straw. Nah, it wasn't at first. <clears throat> not at first. It was very crushing. Then she and I became very close, ironically. And um, I mean, after he and I decided to let it go. But... Mm -hmm. um. She was a real good friend to me during my mother's death and all of that. But um, I know that sounds weird, but we were two people going through something that was along the lines of humiliating. And it, it felt like who else could you share this oddly unique situation with? So, I, you know, we called each other to get information because she and I both were previous relationships of his in our younger years as well. So this was mm -hmm. also another time, and but our first time ever talking. So we, you know, we talked about all kinds of stuff from the past. And in that, we, we connected as friends. And it's still a testament to the type of man he is because all of his baby mothers, we're all cool with each other. We're all, all we get now that the children are here, damn it. You, they're here now. <laughs> you can't take nothing back. And so we are the best mothers that I've ever seen in a group um, on, with the same um, baby father. I think it's, it's amazing. But, uh, yeah, so I'll leave that there. Okay. And then I guess soon after you had the baby with Wayne, Wayne ended up going to prison. Yeah, that was a terrible, terrible time. Yeah. Um, Very, very hard. But everyone was there. All of us was there supporting him the whole way, the whole time. And I can't imagine what that was for him. I Still to this day, I'm like, I don't even know, having living such a drastically different lifestyle, how did he even get through that? Like, that's drastic. But... You know, yeah, that was difficult. Like I said, I got pregnant. I found out that other pregnancy had occurred. We broke up. My mother died. He went to prison. This is the same year. Hmm. Absolutely. Sad. Sad. Very, 